The amp repair guy dot com two zero three eight nine two four one one nine. So today I am working on a AL eight eleven H. My workbench here is nice and clean, as you can see. Finally, I just work on so many amps here and get out of control pretty quick. So here we have the AL eight eleven H. He's the bias modification, the meter protection diode is shorted. Let's see if I can grab a pencil here, point everything out. Screw has loosened up for the plate choke. I put a longer one in anyway, so back that a little bit. So I don't know why they use such a short screw. So anyway, I'll take care of that. I will remove the metal oxide variesters. This one does not have the grids grounded so I will ground the grids directly to the metal like I've shown many times before needs new SO239 connectors these ones just slip right in and out so I'll replace those also needs a new air variable capacitor on the plate side let's see so let's see if I can point it out here you can see right there where it is damaged right there in the middle there Oop, too close so I'll replace that with a brand new one and I will repair anything else that I see along the way so stay tuned and I will see you guys soon and this is getting a brand new set of Penta Lab. Uh, 572B tubes. Those will be here tomorrow. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon. Stay tuned. I have the grids grounded directly to the metal. I added the two gas discharge tubes, one per side of the filament. All filaments are in parallel, so I only need one on each side. We'll protect the amplifier and the transceiver. If any of the tubes were to flash, it's highly unlikely with a 572, but you never know. And if someone at some point put 811s in, it's very likely. So, uh, I just always do it. And uh, I've seen in a lot of these where the, the nut, where they attach the grid to ground connection, when the grids are grounded, is loose, finger tight. And in this one the standoffs were very loose well the screw going through the terminal strip where the grid resistors connect to ground was loose okay so got the air variable capacitor installed i'll show the the old one after and there's the new reduction drive the filament wires have been stripped and i'm going to get back to work see you guys soon hey i am almost done but i want to show you this anode cap Arched pretty good right there, so I'm just gonna. If I didn't have any of these, I'd clean it up real good, but I have some, so I'm just gonna swap it out. So I'll do a final video after after I test it, and I'll see you guys. Okay, so I'm back with the completed Ameritron AL811H amplifier. I'll go over everything I did, tested full output on all bands, got a brand new set of Pentalabs 572s. I will not work on these unless you upgrade to 572s. The customers get them at the dealer price, so they're less money versus buying them from wherever. So I'll show you the old parts first. Here's the old gear reduction drive. Got a brand new one, the old anode cap, the old SO239s, the old metal oxide varistors. Here are the caps that were at the base of the sockets. There's the old meter protection diode and the old gear variable capacitor on the plate side. It should not do this. This thing took a hard hit at some point, so it's all sorts of tweaked. Here's the old screw. I always put a longer screw in at the base of the plate choke. So when you ground the grids, you always want to make sure you reconnect the safety choke. So I use one of these terminals right here and solder it. I'll show you the SO239s. So the semi-new PL259, you always want to go in straight, never at an angle, nice and tight now. 
input on the bottom, output on the top. You never want an open on the output. It's really bad. And it's not good for your transceiver. Most transceivers, they all have like a protection circuit. It's still not a good idea to put an open on a transceiver either. So you always want good SO239 connectors with a nice tight grip. Did the bias modification over here. Change the meter protection diode, like I said before. Change that anode cap. Took this whole assembly out. I showed that in a previous video. I also re-glued the top windings, a few windings at the top of the plate choke. They started coming unraveled. Checked to make sure it had the proper fuses in it. And this thing is good to go. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. Please beware. There are people out there that do some of the, you know, things I do. They'll, they'll repair it, send it on its way, but you really want to go through the entire amp, touch on everything, so you don't have an additional problem. You know, it could be a week from when it's repaired, a month or whatever, and... You know, you never ever want to put a brand new set of tubes in an amplifier until you make sure everything else is correct. I also compressed the socket clips. I forgot to mention that before. I compressed them and cleaned them with deoxic gold. So, thanks again for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com and my phone number once again, 203-892-4119. Thanks for watching. 73. Want to make one last quick note. Customer or whoever before him put these LED strip things in. I just added a zip tie, so they work. I left it alone, but I did not do this. So, hey, 73.